Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Tanika. In today's video, I am going to be doing a first impressions slash a couple of day wear test on the new Makeup Revolution Conceal and Hydrate Foundation and Concealer. In all my foundation reviews, I like to show you demos, including close-ups of what the foundation looks like on my skin. I'll show you swatch comparisons and then give you my overall thoughts and let you know if it's worth your money. If this sounds good to you, make sure you give this video a thumbs up while you're watching and let's get into it. Starting with the foundation, this one is described to suit every skin type, but it's especially beneficial for dry skin. It says it's formulated with hyaluronic acid, what isn't these days though? And it offers an all day long radiance and glow without settling into fine lines or clinging to dry patches. It says it has a medium to full coverage with a smooth satin finish. It comes in 50 shades, just like the Conceal and Hydrate Foundation. It retails for nine pounds, which translates to roughly 16 Australian dollars, and it comes with 23 mils of product. This foundation also comes with a pump, which is a really nice upgrade from that paddle doe foot applicator thing in the Conceal and Define foundation. Now, Makeup Revolution did recently come to Priceline in Australia, but this one isn't available yet, so you do have to pick it up from the Revolution website. So the shades I'm reviewing today, the foundation I picked up F0.7, which is described for fair skins with a light neutral undertone. And the concealer, I picked up the shade F0.2, which is for fairest skin tones with a light yellow undertone. All right, well, let's jump into some swatches so you can get a feel for the shades. All right, so the first three shades here are actually concealers. This is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define in C1 and the Conceal and Define in C0.5. Now, as you can see, neutral undertone, pink undertone. This here is the Conceal and Hydrate Concealer in C0.2. And this is described to have a yellow undertone. You can definitely see the difference between these three. They are very strong in their undertones. Onto the foundations, this is the Conceal and Define in F1, and this is the Conceal and Hydrate in F0.7. Now these are both described to have neutral undertones, and I believe they do. I'm hoping the Conceal and Hydrate isn't still going to be a bit too dark, because this one here, F1, is a bit too dark for me. But when you go lighter in the shades, there are no more neutral undertones. It's only strong pinks and strong yellows. So I'm not sure if I had a foundation with these undertones, if it would match me. So we'll see how this applies soon. Moving on, this is the Maybelline Superstay in the shade 110 Porcelain. Here is the L'Oreal True Match Foundation in 0.5N Porcelain. Here is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in 110. And this is the MAC Studio Fix in NW10. I am going to use a green primer today because I just feel like my skin is really red and I still want a nice coverage. So in with my L'Oreal Infallible Anti-Redness Primer. I would then usually go ahead and color correct these blemishes further, but I think I'll leave it so I can see what the coverage is really like. Now for reference, I do have normal to combo skin. I get a little oily throughout my T-zone and then I also get dry around any breakouts and pimples that I do have. I recently tested out the Fenty Hydrating Foundation and although it did look nice at first, it didn't really hold up on me. I will link that review down below. So I'm interested to see how this hydrating formula goes. It's quite a liquidy formula. You can see that it is traveling down the palette quite quickly. I think this color might be all right, actually. Ooh, okay. I'll do half of my face with my sponge and the other half with my brush. All right, first things first, I think the color match is actually really nice. I will not have to add any lightning drops, so perfect. The coverage is pretty good too. I can still see a lot of this redness peeping through, but as I mentioned, I would usually go in and color correct that. I'll put another layer on though and see how it builds. 
The rest of my face though, I think the coverage is looking pretty nice. As for the hydrating aspect, it does have a bit of a glow to it. It is looking like that nice satin finish. It doesn't look overly oily and glowy. All right, that layered pretty nicely. I would definitely say it's a medium coverage because again, I can still see these blemishes. All right, so I'll do the other side with a brush. This is the Sigma F82 Round Kabuki. All right, so for the brush side, I definitely think it gives around about the same amount of coverage. I can see a few little streak marks like brush marks on my chin though. So I'm just going to smooth that out with my sponge. So again, I definitely think it has a medium coverage. It has that nice glow. It's nothing too dewy. It just looks like a really nice natural satin finish, which I really like on me. If you have really dry skin, I don't know if this is going to be enough to hydrate you. Now for the concealer, this one is described to be suitable for everyone looking for a lightweight finish with a boost of moisture. It offers all day hydration thanks to an infusion of, you guessed it, hyaluronic acid. It covers blemishes, even skin tone and counteracts dark circles while drenching skin with moisture. It says it is designed for drier skin. The sheer satin finish won't settle into fine lines and the doe foot applicator allows for a smooth, delicate application. So I picked up the shade C0.2. It says it comes with 13 grams of product. It retails for eight pounds, pounds, eight pounds, <laughs> which is around 14 Australian dollars. So I am a little bit worried about this one because as you saw in the swatch, it's super yellow. Wow. <laughs> Let's do one eye at a time and just uh, see what happens. I'm just going to put a little bit more on to see if I can build up that coverage. Okay, that is super, super bright, a little bit too bright. Once blended in though, it doesn't look really yellow. It kind of just gives that brightening effect. The coverage, I would definitely say medium. My under eyes don't look really hydrated either. Let me zoom you in. I think that just looks pretty average. I'm not going to use as much on this eye. I think I went a little bit overboard before. <laughs> This eye, it is settling into my fine lines. Oh, they're not really fine lines. They're quite deep lines. That usually happens with a medium coverage concealer though, so I'm not too worried. My skin is still a little bit tacky to touch. There's a bit of makeup on my fingers there. If you've got dry skin, you probably won't need to set this. I always set my foundation, so I'm going to go in with my models prefer mineral finishing veil and see how that goes. All right, so adding the powder, it has obviously made it look a bit more matte, but I found with the Fenty foundation, after a few hours, the glowiness started to like, come back through the powder. So we'll see if this foundation does the same thing. Overall though, I'm pretty happy with the coverage. It feels really lightweight on the skin. I do think my under eyes are looking quite bright, but once I put the rest of my makeup on, it'll probably be okay, I hope. All right, so I've just finished my makeup. Quite a dramatic look today. The foundation is looking really nice. Everything applied beautifully over the top. There wasn't any patchiness or the foundation didn't move around. Right now, I don't think there's much of that luminosity and glow coming through. I am glowy where I've put highlighter, but that's about it. So right now I would say it's looking more like a satin matte finish. I'll give you a close up of what the foundation looks like with my makeup completed, and then I'll be back in a few hours to give you a check-in. All right, so I've had the foundation on for about five hours, which isn't very long, but I'm ready to check out for the day. So let's suss it out. So here you can see that it's pretty shiny and on my forehead here, it's 
it's gone a bit patchy. But I still think like my cheeks look really nice, my chin still looks good, and it hasn't broken up around my nose. So I've got a tissue here. I'm just going to blot and see if it fixes anything. All right, so I think that definitely helped to get rid of that shiny look. As I said, five hours really isn't a long time for me to be testing a foundation, so I will wear it to work tomorrow, and you will see me tomorrow afternoon with another check-in. Hey guys, so I have had the foundation on for eight and a half hours. I wore it to work today, and I've got some, I've got some thoughts. Firstly, I think I put too much on this morning because it looked pretty cakey from the start. Yesterday I only applied two pumps, but today I did three because I wanted to see how well it layered and it looked good at the time, but once I powdered and did the rest of my face, I was just like, ooh, she cakey. So let's start with the fact that it's meant to be a hydrating foundation. It's definitely not as dewy looking as the Fenty foundation. I definitely think it's more of a satin matte and even after having it on for eight and a half hours, I've only blotted once and even then not a lot come off. And I feel like I don't even look that shiny, just a little bit throughout here, but everywhere else it's just looking like my normal foundation does. Now it hasn't worn that well. Around my nose it's coming off. I did blow it a few times though, so I rubbed it off a bit, but even around my mouth it's starting to separate. Same with on my chin and it is starting to fade up on my forehead here. So I will zoom you in and show you, <laughs> prepare yourself. So you can see how oily it looks throughout my nose here and that it's breaking up around my chin. I definitely need to take this off. It is past its use by date. I think around the seven hour mark is when it started to go downhill. But as I said, I'll try it again using only two pumps so that way it's not as cakey and we'll see how it lasts then. So I'll see you soon. Hey guys, so another day down wearing the foundation. It is currently 3.30, so I've had it on for nine hours now and I'm not mad about it. So like, it doesn't look fantastic, but it looks good for nine hours. As you can see, I am a little shiny throughout my T-zone, but I have not blotted all day. And if I were to put powder on top, I could probably get a little bit longer wear out of it as well. So here is a close up of what it's looking like. As you can see, I feel like my cheeks look okay. It's starting to break up a little bit on my chin and over my nose. Also a little bit on my forehead. So overall, I think that I got pretty decent wear for around the eight hour mark. It's definitely not a long wearing foundation. As for the hydrating aspect, I'm finding it difficult because after reviewing the Fenty foundation, which was super hydrating and I was looking really dewy, this, it's just, it's not the same. I feel like this foundation I can definitely wear and get away with, without looking overly dewy. And so with that being said, if you've got really dry skin, I'm not sure if this foundation is going to be hydrating enough for you. Overall though, I'm pretty happy with this foundation. It's really comfortable on the skin. Today I only went in with two pumps and it looked a lot better. I would definitely use this foundation again. I'm not really sure how well it would hold up in super hot weather, but for right now, it's perfect. As for the concealer, I just wasn't that impressed with it. It says it's meant to be hydrating. I found it to be just like a regular concealer. If you've used the Flower Beauty Concealer, you would know when you apply that, it just looks so hydrating under the eyes and it has a bit of a glow to it. And that's what I kind of expected from this. And I just didn't quite get the same finish. I wouldn't repurchase the hydrating concealer again. I'm just happy to use the Conceal and Define. As for how this compares to the Conceal and Define foundation, to be honest, it doesn't seem like there's that much of a difference. I feel like they both wore reasonably the same, longevity-wise, coverage-wise, and how comfortable it feels on the skin. If you were tossing up between the two though, I would just go depending on your skin type. If you've got dry skin, get the hydrating. If you've got normal to oily skin, get the Conceal and Define. 
All right, well, I think that is everything I have to say about this foundation. If I missed anything or you have any questions, just leave me a comment down below. I hope you enjoyed watching, and if you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. I hope my foundation reviews have been helpful for you as well. If you're new here, I would also love it if you would subscribe to my channel, and if you want more foundation reviews, I will link my playlist down below. All right, well, I hope you're all having a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. So I picked up the shade Z Zero video a thumbs up. I hope you...